Welcome back to We're, We're Here and We Matter. The podcast that actually talks about women with bleeding disorders. Because we're here and we matter. What's with that smile? Nothing. Jess. It's Leo. Ah, Leo was in Romeo, Leo? Jess was in Romeo and Juliet, and now she has a big old crush on the boy who played Romeo. Liam! Your squirrel better give me that back. That was hours of work, and French tutor hoods aren't for squirrels. We have Pam on the line. Who are you even talking to? You. And why are you using a headset? Because I'm a professional. Pam, hello. Well, hi, Rachel and Jess. Thanks for being here. Can you tell us a little about yourself? I am a mom in Colorado, and I have... Two teenagers, one with hemophilia, one without, and I myself am a hemophiliac with levels lower than my son. My specific journey was once he was diagnosed, um, I was scheduled to have a sinus surgery later that year, and I felt it was important to know if I also was a bleeder before having that procedure because they tend to be on the bloody side. And I wanted medication and protection if I was indeed going to need it. So I basically told the surgeon about my son's bloody experience with his surgery and gave her the option of, hey, you can do this one little specific test because we know what he has. Or you can let me bleed out on your table. Which do you choose? And she chose the test. She chose the right answer. Um, And my levels came back actually lower than my kiddos. But then I was promptly told by the hematologist in my doctor's office, oh, you're a carrier. You don't have hemophilia because you're a woman and women can't have hemophilia. My little brother was diagnosed pretty much at birth. And well, it's not been that way for me. There is a lot of stigma in the medical community around women in general and women who tend to advocate for themselves. We're called hypochondriacs, we're called whiners, all sorts of things. We're exaggerating. So the first thing you have to do is be okay with that and get over it and know that that's their issue and learn your body and advocate for yourself. Believe women. Literally. I've been hearing about girls who've had a tough time because they didn't get diagnosed early. Did you struggle with this? I had injured my knee when I was 15 and torn some stuff. And they went in and took things out and tried to rebuild it and put me on massive amounts of ibuprofen, which for folks with bleeding disorders is kind of a discouraged medication. It's a no-no. It makes you bleed more. So I basically spent the first 40 years of my life on a medication that I wasn't supposed to be taking anyway. And so it was making things a lot worse. And sure enough, my joints weren't healing properly. Mainly, anytime I would use my leg, I would get what's called a microbleed. And essentially, it's not bad enough that I get massive swelling or big bruises, but I'm basically leaking into my joint all the time. This sounds like a true life roller coaster. Thanks a bunch for sharing it with us. I really appreciate the opportunity to participate in sharing this message for others out there. So hopefully others don't have to have the same long journey and un- revocable pain and damage and things like that. Um, I just think you guys are awesome. You think we are awesome? Hey, so we're working on building a worksheet for girls to take to their doctors. What should be on it? Having a support system, maybe having like a buddy. Everyone needs a Rachel. And everyone needs a Jess. Pam, that's a great idea. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Speaking of the buddy system, What's Leo saying? He hasn't responded. Can I see that for a second? Rachel, what are you doing? Uh, hi? Oh, yes. This is the pizza delivery store that you totally ordered from. I didn't order pizza. Is this Rachel? This is pizza. First name Peppa, last name Roni. It's iconic. I am an icon, a pizza icon! And that's how you do an amateur prank call. 